Welcome back, friends. James Corbett here, CorbettReport.com, with Solutions Watch in June of 2022. Do you remember Solutions Watch? Maybe not. It's been a while. Thank you, as uh, as I've been wont to say lately, thank you for waiting while I am busy, hard at work, trust me, hard at work behind the scenes on some longer-term projects. Uh, but I am not stopping the podcast or the Solutions Watch or any of the other regular um, programs that I do. Uh, it's just they're coming less frequently now. But I am back today with a Solutions Watch on a topic that I know a lot of parents in the crowd are interested in specifically, which is how do I start introducing these sorts of subjects to my children? And there's a lot of different ways to do that, I think, and I certainly don't claim to be on a high horse knowing all of them, but I do have an idea today that was suggested uh, by a book, uh, Bill Goats and the Forest by Frude Burdal Klevstuhl, who... uh, has written this incredibly interesting book, and I won't prejudge it. I was going to think, is this a, a fairy tale, an allegory, a, a, just a story? Um, but I, I won't put words in the author's mouth. I'll let him do that. But first, just reading from the back of the book, the introduction, it says, There once was a forest that covered a valley that stretched all the way from the mountains to the sea. The forest was a special place, being described by those who knew it as tranquil and safe. Those who knew the forest well described it as majestic and wise, but words were inadequate to describe the forest, since the only way to know the forest was to experience the forest. There was an old saying that a day in the forest would clear the mind of stress, a week would relieve the body of pain, a month would free the heart of its sorrow, and a year would heal the soul of its burdens. This is what the forest did. All was perfect. All was in balance. Then came Bill Goats with his mountain goat minions. Bill Goats did not respect the balance. He wanted to control life. He wanted to be God. And that is the uh, intriguing summarization, or at least introduction, here on the back of the book. But uh, rather than me blabbing on about it, let's bring the author on, Frude. Thank you very much for joining us today on The Corbett Report. Thank you so much for inviting me, James. Uh, it's nice being here. Well, thank you for writing this book. And as I say, I don't know, I, I'm not going to try to come to my own summarization of what this book is. What do you describe it as? Is it a fairy tale? Is it an allegory? Is it a story? What do you say? I have uh, described the book as a fairy tale. It's, uh, And I think that's uh, related to how my upbringing actually when i was a child i my father used to read uh, fairy tales to me and so we have a very nice tradition in 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 scandinavia i would say with some fairy tales and uh, some children's book also that um there's for example some called aspirants and, and mo there is a, a collection of fairy tales that uh, my dad used to read for me and there is especially one Swedish author that has uh, inspired me. Uh, like not, I haven't directly thought of her when I wrote this book, but I, I think she's, she's been influential. And uh, her name is Astrid Lindgren. And uh, there are some fantastic books there uh, about the, the good versus evil that has definitely uh, inspired me uh, and I think has affected this story in a way. Um, so I, I've, I've actually thought of this uh, this story as a fairy tale, but I, I, I can see when you say it, it can def- an allegory as well can, can be used, that term. So, and, um, and it is sort of this classical story about it is. The good versus is good versus evil. It's uh, it's what it's all about, and it's about how some uh, trying to manipulate others and and control others. And uh, as it's, as you read from the back of the book, um, you have this Bill Goats that is acting as God. He wants uh, the world under his control. And when I wrote it, though, I didn't initially think about it being a children's book i i, I didn't, didn't have that in mind especially but i um, that's um it's definitely i can see it's very nice that it's a way to tell this story of what is going on in this world because that's what i tried to say in this story actually what has happening over the last two plus years but also what has been going on for a for a long time in this world and um it's it's a way of 
telling that story in um for those who it can also like children is a is a target group group but i think also those that maybe don't read uh, long uh, articles or those that they don't care about maybe the documentaries either so it's a, it's i'm thinking of it as a different angle to to attack this problem where we have to try to uh, make people see what's going on so uh, it's it's one more angle to to shine light on what is going on in, in, in this world. Well, it, it certainly is. And it's one that I have stressed repeatedly, not just on Solutions Watch, but in my work generally, um, writing a new narrative, in this case, quite literally writing a narrative that hopefully, as you say, and I don't want to limit this to just children, as you say, all sorts of people would be interested in this story. It's a, a longish short story, a shortish novella, something along those lines. Um, it would not take a great deal of time to read. So it's quite accessible for a wide audience, um, including children. And I, I put it in those terms because I specifically, I read this story with my boy, my nine-year-old boy, at his uh, bedtime over the course of a few uh, evenings. And we enjoyed this book. In fact, every night when it got to the point where I thought, okay, that's enough for tonight, he would always try to beg me to read a little bit more. But no, no, that's good for tonight. We'll do some more tomorrow. So it was a hit with my boy. And I, I, I think obviously, as a parent, this is something that I think about quite a bit, especially as a parent who runs the Corbett Report. What do you do, Daddy? What do you do for a living? Well, well, son, it's difficult to to broach that conversation, especially with a child who does not have the, the understanding of the narrative as it exists versus the reality that we're facing and all of this. It's, it's a lot to introduce to a child, but a book like this certainly does help to put it into context, I think, in a way that I think people intuitively understand, including children. So let's talk. Let's talk about the genesis of this story. You say you didn't have a children's story in mind per, per se when you were writing this. What did you have in mind? Why did you decide to put this in this form? Yeah, I, I have to say that after uh, this uh, so-called pandemic started in uh, in 2020, I. Um, when this entire entire thing started, I I, I just didn't uh, I didn't believe what was going on. But I, I have to admit that I didn't have the information to actually analyze what what was happening. So, and it was a friend of mine that recommended your channel to me, and um, I have to say that's been of great help as well to to really to to sort of put things together and, and get a better get a grasp of things. And I realized when I when I realized what was happening in the world i i just figured out i have to do something so what can i do and i, I and i tried doing different things actually I've, uh, like over the period so uh, for a while i was collecting collecting uh, videos of uh, police violence i, I thought like, yeah, i'd create a video database of that um i uh, i i created um uh, well, um, a statistic solution where for uh, uh, like the side effects of um, of uh, uh, from the vaccines uh, in Norway, so I did, did different things. But then suddenly, when I was on, uh, I was running. I was r literally living in the forest in Norway, and uh, one Christmas uh, day, end of 2020, I uh, was running in the forest. Uh, as I normally uh, did, um, and it's very special. But suddenly, when I was there in the forest and I was just stopped to adjust some clothes, uh, this entire story came to me, uh, and the entire outline of the story, including the title, just uh, came to me. And then for the next hour, when I was running, I constantly thought of this story. And as soon as I got back to my Computer. I just sat down and started writing the outline, so I had it, and um, and I I took it from there and worked on it from there. So and I also uh, showed it to to my woman, and uh, she she loved the story as well. She I, I I thought it was a great idea when it came to me, and she loved it, and uh, and that's then I understood that okay, this is the way I've been looking for. This is the 
this is how I can contribute to what is happening. This is this is what I have to do. And I really felt that urge that I have to go through and and con- complete this project. Even though this story was there, it's been a lot of work to 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 finish it and, and, and in so many different ways because it's been quite stressful, of course, what has been happening over the last two years. So it's been very mentally very 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 draining um and uh, as well uh, we have we have moved countries I, i've literally moved i'm i'm from norway but we've moved uh, so now we're sitting in the middle of Atlant- uh, the atlantic ocean uh at a place called the azores so and this has all happened while i've been working on this story so it's been hard to find time actually to to concentrate to 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 write but I had this urge that I, yes, I just have to do it. I have to go on, and I, uh, I didn't. Qu- I have to say that I, I, I didn't know. I, I felt that is a, or, or I, I liked the story, but I didn't know in what way this, uh, like what people this can, sort of affect. But um, I think it's yeah. As, as I said, it's like it's. It's a great way to tell this narrative that to people that uh, maybe aren't so easy to talk to otherwise. So, um, you know, that's that's a wonderful story because it reflects exactly what I want to inspire. Hopefully, in the audience, is to for everyone has something they can do to contribute towards spreading this information or making changes in their local community or whatever it is. I think we all feel that once we start to learn this information, now what do I do? So I love to see it when someone gets activated and motivated and puts something out there. So that's a great aspect of this story. But let's let's talk about the story in particular, uh, because we haven't really described it yet. Um, obviously, this is about Bill Goats, who is a mountain goat, who is a sort of self-appointed leader of a group of mountain goats that moves down from the mountains into the forest and starts managing the forest, or attempting to, anyway. Um, And the uh, the parallels with the situation we've lived through the past couple of years will will be quite obvious. Not only the name Bill Goats, but also the sickness that uh, takes over the forest and how the Bill uh, Bill Goats and his minions decide to manage that sickness, etc. Again, I think the parallels should be fairly obvious, but I think... At any rate, the story itself is quite fascinating, the way it develops. And I was quite interested to see, how is it going to end? What is going to be the ending of this story? I won't, we won't spoil anything for people today, but it's an interesting, it's an interesting ending. And it, it certainly does give you pause for reflection and, okay, okay, so what does that mean on the allegorical level? And how do we apply that in real life? <laughs> anyway, that's fascinating in and of itself. But tell people about the story in general, what the story is, and what you want what what you want to gesture to with, with regards to it. Yeah, the, the, the story, the, a key uh, part of the story is uh, what I write about is something about called the balance. And I think that's... Uh, that sort of describes what the story is about. It's uh, uh, everything, and I believe it's like that in life, everything strives to get into balance. And if we let things be, things will be okay. Things will be fine. And in nature, for example, if we work with nature and not against nature, uh, it will eventually, everything will find its way back into balance. And, um, and I think that's the the key part because to me, Bill Goats represents a also a a way of thinking that uh, you can take control over everything else. You can take control over others. You can take control over everything that is not alive and that is alive. So, uh, and that's obviously if you think like that. Well, I think you don't have a clue, actually. You don't understand the balance. And as it's written in the story, in the balance, death, for example, it's a natural part of the balance. And uh, we see that in, in, in today's, uh, what's happening in the world. Like Everyone is talking about like you sh- like as if no one should die, but death has always been quite normal. Uh, and death is simply a beginning of something new. 
So I think that's sort of the key uh, to actually understand the balance. Is uh, and and I, I hope that the the book helps the readers and and to actually to see this that it's uh, it it is everything is in cycle. Everything has its natural way, and then you have those creatures as like Bill Goats in here that is working against what is natural and that leads to disaster because what he doesn't understand at all is that you can't have control over everything it's impossible it will never work and i believe that's uh, in today's world as well there are people and there are groups of people that take try to take control over everything and they uh, to me, it's hard to understand how they think that they can manage everything. I, I, I don't. It's hard to like uh, to be in their minds, but uh, I strongly believe that they will never manage to. It never goes as planned into every detail, and uh, and this entire world is seeking balance in the end. So um, yeah, and uh, I want to leave. I won't say anything about the the story either, but I, I, I want it to be a, a book as well that hopefully can give uh, people some hope. Uh, so it's uh, so it's a bit bit positive. Uh, I think I so. I think what you're you're gesturing towards is is the key part of what I'm talking about with writing a new narrative is to take something that we're all experiencing, but to reconceptualize it, not in the terms in which we are given it, but to see it from that other perspective that even a child can see. It's like the emperor, the emperor's new clothes and pointing out, hey, he's naked. And it takes a child to see, hey, that guy's naked. What's going on? And then everyone can see the deception that's being performed. And similarly, in this story, I think children can understand the sort of archetypes that they're that we're identifying here, including the what children might see as a sort of the busybody or the manager, the person who tries to come in and manage everything, but that we all know that's silly. And I think that's adequately represented in this book in a way that, in a way that we can see that it's ridiculous, it's self-defeating, it's futile, and we also see that it's something to kind of scoff and laugh at. And if nothing else, I hope that is what my son takes out of this. I mean, I could sit my son down at nine years old and show him the Who is Bill Gates documentary. Um, but I, you know, I, th I think a lot of that would be sort of beyond his ken and probably boring for a nine-year-old. However, in this story, seeing and understanding that type of of person and what they are attempting to do and why and but it's not going to work and this is why and this is what it leads to and seeing that in narrative form is something again that's immediately graspable so i appreciated your ability to help me open this conversation with my son so thank you for that um other feedback that you've heard from other people about this book uh there aren't many people that have read the book yet, actually. And uh, I'm and one of the first. Yeah, you yeah. are definitely one of the first. So uh, it was last week the the website was uh, published, BillGoats.com, uh, and uh, so there. Well, I'm 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 looking forward to getting some feedback. There are we have gotten some, or I've gotten some reviews, uh, but you can find that. Those on uh, on on billgoats.com the site. So there are some reviews there, but actually, uh, no, I'm I'm looking forward to starting getting feedbacks, and it's uh, and it's very nice to hear that actually that your son was eager to hear more every night. Mm -hmm. of, he uh, the he enjoyed the story. He was hooked. So it definitely worked in that sense as well. All right, now. Uh, on another aspect of something that Solutions Watch is oriented towards, which is, again, activating people and getting them involved, but also, hopefully, not in the easy way that we could do this. Oh, you know, Amazon print on demand or something like that. You know, that would be the easy way to publish your own book, right? But of course, then you're just helping Amazon and Jeff Bezos. But I understand you didn't go that route with this. Um, this is published by Empathic Publishing. Tell me about this. What? How did this come about? That's correct. That's uh, that's a publishing company that me and my girlfriend has, uh, Empathic Publishing. So, um, well, it 
it would be to me i didn't want this book digital uh because it's 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 well when you read the story we might understand <laughs> and uh and i definitely didn't want to use didn't want to use any of the big tech uh, solutions for this because we thought like there are different ways to go and yeah as you say amazon would be the easiest way just to get it up there and have it print on demand but here we want to take control and based on what uh, what we've learned over the last uh, last couple of years or more than that for that sake but we don't want to risk being censored or whatever like we just and we want to also just as a good uh, to to learn ourselves how to be independent on online so we have uh, we have a we had a publishing company from before my my girlfriend has published one book in norwegian and we thought, okay, we'll do this this book on the same company. And uh, she also self-published her book. So we, uh, and I helped her with the building of the website and everything there. So we had some experience. Uh, and uh, she has worked a lot in design, and I'm also drawing. So the 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 front page here, I've uh, drawn myself. Uh, she has designed the book, so um, everything is uh, done in house. And uh, I've also, we, yeah, we went to, uh, here in the A source, we went to check different options for printing the books. So we went to a printer that can, uh, could um, print our books, uh, which actually is a bit difficult these days because, uh, because of the, like there are paper shortages. So, um, but we, we managed to get it done, even though it took a bit longer than we expected. And then, uh, in, like, I built, I have actually, from before, I had built my own uh, content management solution. So I used that solution to, to create the Build Goats website. And then I set up a, uh, a web shop also. Uh, and I used for that open source uh, WordPress with a plugin WooCommerce that is all freely available for anyone. And I, I built since we uh, we're sitting here on the island and it's the Portuguese uh, postal system. So I bi- built code on top of uh, WooCommerce to print shipping labels and address labels and and handle the orders. So uh, w- actually, like writing the book has taken a while, but it's also taken a while everything else to be in the situation in this position where we are now to be independent to to be able to sell this from our own home and then from our own web page but it's um, it's it's a great feeling it's uh, I, I, instead of going the easy route so to actually go the extra mile and, and really uh, and do do the work that is required and also i have to say that it's uh, it's very rewarding when learning new things because then for example i like, how do you print shipping labels? I had to figure these uh, things out myself. So it's like sort of, and it's rewarding, very rewarding when when you manage doing these stuff, uh, different things. And I, I also believe that strongly that these days that, uh, and I know you talked about it, and it's a solution watch watch is a inspiration. But we have to take back control. We have to, in as many ways as possible, we have to understand the process of things how things work how things uh, are put together so for example now if there is someone else that in this era that like wants to start selling their own things okay i can help them i can tell them yeah you can use this in this program and and uh, i create this open source uh, ordering system in python on top of woocommerce which is freely available for anyone that would like to look at that so um it's uh, uh, yeah, I think that's uh, very very Im- important. To, to and I think in line to... with the uh, the message of the book itself, in a sense, um, working with nature rather than against it, and trying to do things uh, in a way that fosters independence, I think is generally a good thing. And especially in this case, yes, uh, exactly my philosophy as well. It would be so easy for me to just 
make ebooks on Amazon and sell them that way, but uh, I'm not going to do it, and I'm not going to feed the po pockets of Bezos. It's better if we can do it ourselves. And then, just as one of the dividends, hey, then th you can't be censored off of, you know, whatever big tech platform because Bill Gates or whoever doesn't approve of your product, right? And it's... Uh, it, Absolutely. I think building up these systems is definitely important in the long run. And as I say, part of part of the theme of this book. And as you say, um, nicely designed. I, I love the, uh, the... And you have the space in the back for coloring, which uh, <laughs> allows me to get my six-year-old girl involved in this as well. So th thank you for that as well. All right. Um, I, I think we'll leave the conversation here today. Um, I, I'm looking forward to hearing the feedback from other parents out there who do take this up and um, to share it with their children and see how that goes with them and whether that opens up the space for those types of conversations. I think it will. I think that's what uh, this type of book is just perfect for doing. Um, on another related note, it's a semi-related note, um, I should note that you are, of course, also helping to produce the anti anti Putin podcast, <laughs> which is a, a big podcast in the Norwegian language sphere, which people might remember from my recent appearance on that podcast earlier this year. And yes, my Magen is much better. Thank you very much uh, for the inquiry. <laughs> uh, tell people about your podcast. Yeah, that's a uh, that's, uh, good pronunciation. Anti <laughs> <It's laughs> Yay. So, uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, you, you, you guested uh, the podcast and that's great. You red pilled the Norwegians, which uh, is a difficult task, I would say. Um, so in the beginning of uh, last year, uh, we started this podcast, uh, and it's it's another project of ours. That, that's um, me and my girlfriend's project, and um, we thought we saw it was a room. We, there was need to actually uh, to to inform Norwegians about what was going on in the world because there weren't many good sources for. Uh, yeah, good information. Uh, and uh, she is a journalist, so uh, and she's worked in radio before. So and um, so we combined forces, and and I'm doing all the technical things and editing and those things, and she's uh, doing the interviews. So together we work uh, on that, and it, it became it has become very popular actually in in Norway, and we were ranked as one of the. Um, one of the more popular podcasts in Norway. Um, strangely enough, even though we see that we actually have more downloads uh, than before, uh, it's no longer on any of the top lists. <laughs> so, and I also noticed that we've got a lot of warnings uh, in uh, Spotify, which uh, most Norwegians seem to use Spotify. Um, so things have changed, but I, I, based on the feedback, I know we reach out to people and then, yeah, we've, you've been on. So we have some in, in between the Norwegian episodes, we have some English episodes. Same thing, we look at what is going on in the world and um, try to uh, like uh, tackle information in a way that maybe for many Norwegian that aren't as advanced uh, as I would say, uh, like if you if you followed you know, like the Corbett report for 15 years, yeah, uh, you know a lot about what's going on. But if you haven't, if you just woke up to this uh, brave new world in uh, 2020, then uh, maybe everything is uh, sh sh very shocking to you. So we try to uh, more like, as you said, like red pilling the Norwegian is a good expression to, yeah. I love podcasting. my Scandinavian brothers and sisters dearly, but yeah, they do tend to be overall quite trusting of their governments and not quite questioning of official stories. I think that is changing. And no, no, uh, no, uh, uh, with thanks to podcasts like the ones that you're producing, I, I think it is changing, but it's, uh, it's an uphill battle, yeah. as you know. <laughs> It, it is. And I, I saw a referendum from 2020 and uh, I have that link some, uh, somewhere. Uh, and in Norway, uh, if, I, if I remember correctly, there 93 percent of the population, they trusted their government, 93 percent. And that's a that's a, a very high number. Well, let's chip away at that. And I think, as you say, perhaps no better tool for doing that than a fairy tale. What could be more Scandinavian than a fairy tale, right? To introduce people to a different way of seeing the world. And hey, why not? Maybe your children as well while you're at it. Um, people can get the book at billgoats.com. Anywhere else you'd like to direct people to today? 
BillGoats.com is uh, is the the place to go uh, for the book. And if you're interested in listening to Anti Antipodden, you can go to Anti Antipodden.no. So, but uh, that might be hard to type in. So I guess we'll the link will some... be in the show notes for people. <laughs> Don't worry, people like myself who might have a problem typing that in or pronouncing Thrud Burdal Krevstul. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry for butchering your name. At any rate, hopefully we will get BillGoats.com in people's heads. I hope people will check it out. Um, I think we'll leave it there for today. Thrud, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you, James.